Today, we're looking at incidents, or the number of new daily cases per 100,000 people in a population. This metric rounds out our warning system by incorporating a measure of how much COVID there is in a given community on a given day. As with our other four metrics, infection growth rate, test positivity rate, ICU capacity, and contact tracing, we identify four threat levels for incidents, critical, high, medium, and low. And we consider these values in determining the overall risk level for your community. Let's start by defining incidence. Incidence is a measure of new confirmed COVID cases per day. Basically, how many more people are becoming infected every day? To ensure that incidence can be compared across geographies, we calculate it as a proportion of the population, specifically as new daily cases for every 100,000 people. In some states and counties, the rate at which COVID is spreading is slowing down, which is a good sign. We can see this when the infection growth rate, or RT, is less than one. But despite the slowdown in spread, there could still be a significant number of people who are becoming infected by COVID. You can think of incidents as the speed at which the virus is spreading through the uninfected population. The virus may now be spreading at a speed that is lower than what it was spreading a few weeks ago, but the current speed may still be dangerously high. It is this current speed of spread that the incidence metric helps us to capture. The incidence metric allows us to identify how many new COVID cases there are at a point in time in a particular state or county. Specifically, we calculate incidence as follows. We take an average of the new daily cases over the last seven days and divide it by the population over 100,000. That gives us the new daily cases for every 100,000 people. Now you may ask, why is incidence important? It answers the question, how many new COVID infections are in my area? In doing so, it provides a more complete picture of the state of COVID in a given state or county. As incidence increases, so does the risk that you'll run into an infected individual in your community. Incidence is also important because it drives future hospitalizations and deaths. A higher level of incidence today typically means that you can expect to be filling more ICU beds within a few weeks, and unfortunately, more deaths will normally follow a few weeks after that. Let's take a look at Addison County, Vermont, as an example of a county that has a low level of incidence. The incidence in Addison County is 0.4 cases per 100,000 people. Because the incidence level is below one, we deduce that COVID is being effectively contained in this community. As context, if these rates were to continue, less than 2% of Addison County, Vermont's population would be infected in the next year. Now let's take a look at Davidson County, Tennessee, as an example of a county that has a high level of incidence. The incidence in Davidson County is 64.5 cases per 100,000 people. Because the incidence level is significantly above 25, we rate the threat level as critical, which means that they are experiencing a dangerous level of new cases in this county. As context, if these rates were to continue to rise, more than 50% of Davidson County's Tennessee's population would be infected in the next year. It is important to look at both incidence and infection growth rate when examining a given community. Take a look at the example outlined on the left. A community recovering from a major outbreak may have driven their infection growth rate, also known as RT, down to 0.5, but could still have a very high incidence of 50. In this example, many people in the community have tested positive, but less so than in the weeks prior, meaning that their incidence level is decreasing. Because RT is less than one, their incidence level should continue to drop. For the example on the right-hand side, a community heading towards an outbreak situation may have a high infection growth rate of two, but a currently low level of incidence of five. In this example, we can assume that the incidence of COVID cases in this community will grow in the coming days because of the high infection growth rate of two, which indicates that each person in the community will, on average, infect two additional people. To keep things simple in this explanation, we just said 50 cases. But remember that our incidence metric looks at the calculation per 100,000 people. This is why we believe that incidence and infection growth rate are critical metrics that should be looked at in conjunction. Together, these two metrics provide a kind of early warning system which supports more timely actions that can hopefully be made well before the virus is totally out of control. In addition to helping our overall risk scoring be more comprehensive, 
This metric also has a practical application. Incidence as a metric can also be used to help make decisions about going out in your area or being around others. As incidence increases, so does the risk that you may run into an infected individual on your trip to the grocery store or at a barbecue. Tracking incidents in other states or counties may also influence your decision to travel to one of those communities. Of course, while incidents may affect your decisions on where to go and what to do, you should always be following safe practices such as wearing a mask, regardless of the actual incidence level. We hope that knowing incidents in your community helps you make more informed choices for yourself and for those around you.